sketch another 10 centimeters. Yours, when you do it accurately, hopefully will look something like this. And the way we get the graphical resultant is we say, okay, the beginning of the first one to the end of the second one is what these two are, are equal to. This is the resultant. So you're going to take, hopefully carefully and accurately, draw <laughs> the resultant. Okay. You're also going to measure this angle. All right. Now, again, if you, if you do this carefully, you should get some kind of prediction. Now, I was fairly careful when I drew the angles, so I just measured 30 degrees, so I think that's pretty accurate. What I was not very careful with, and I, maybe I should have because I wanted, I was just, I shouldn't have freehanded. That's a, oh, that's more than 10. And that's more than 10. <sighs> Bummer. So I, I really can't get a accurate uh, prediction here. My memory is telling me it's about 175, but I'll tell you what, let me actually hook it up and see what I get, before, and then I'll write a number. I don't want to put a number there and mislead you. But this is a good time for me to say, okay, on your computer, hit the space bar right now, stop, and do these drawings and see what you get, all right? All right, so I'm gonna assume you did that. And so now, Let's work together and hook up the experiment. This is the part you can't do at home, but at least you can watch me do it together here. All right, so let's come over here and let's hook these two up. Now, I'll, I'll use this one again as my resultant or my equilibrium. And these are my two forces. Now, remember, this one right here is 100 grams at zero degrees. And I'll just leave it alone. It was the same last time. In fact, it'll be the same all five of them. So I'll just leave that one alone. This one is still a hundred grams, so I won't change the weight on here, but it does say change the position. And so I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to clamp it at 60 degrees. All right, so I've got my first one at zero degrees and my second one, and it looks like my string didn't slide real well. Just want to make sure my String is straight, so zero degrees, 60 degrees. Okay, good. And so there are my two forces. And, and, and here's how we do the experimental part of this, is I'm just going to pull on this string to try to figure out where equilibrium is. And it looks like it's right about here if I just kind of pull on it. Now, if I pulled my hand, that doesn't give me a way to measure the amount of force, but at least gives me a way to get the direction. And so it looks like the direction should be right here, and that actually matches the prediction. So remember, I didn't do my drawing very accurately, but if you swing back over here, Ron, remember, uh, my drawing made a prediction of 30 degrees. So opposite of 30 degrees, add, let's see, 30 plus 180 is 150. So I'm saying here, these two forces should act to a force that's at 30 degree. Now, if I add 108, uh, 50, 180 to it, I get 210. And so, sure enough, I'm at 210. Okay, good. The, the one thing I didn't do accurately in my drawing is get a prediction of the weights. So, I'm going to do that more by just trial and error. Right now, I have... Uh, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll leave this on because it's a nice round number. So that's 100. And let me just start piling on more, more weights. Uh, that'd be 120. And just looking at it, I can see that's not enough. Okay. So that'd be 140. That's not enough. That'd be 160, and it's still not enough. 60. 
Um, I'll just put another 20. That'll make 180. But I think that's too much. If I remember right. Well. That is not too bad. But I, I, I really think 175 is really the correct answer and the pulleys just have a little bit of friction. So I'm going to try it with 175. And so here's 170 and here's a 5. So here's 175. Yeah, so the, our pulleys are a little, a little stiff. And so because of that, it, 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 it works for one or the other. And if you were here in the classroom and you actually did the drawing, we'd, we'd hook it up. But I, like I said, I'm pretty sure if I remember right, the prediction is 170. But anyways, there, there you see it. I, I don't need this little, what we call the safety pin. And so what this is saying here is these two add up to the equal and opposite of this one. This is the equilibrium. So if this one has 175, then these two are equal to 175 at an angle of 30 degrees because this one's at 210. All right, so here's what I'm going to uh, write down. I'm going to write down that, okay, my result here, and this is what you're going to have to write down because this is where you and I are working as a team is I did the experiment and I got 175 at an angle of 210 and hopefully it matches the prediction from your uh, oh yeah grams uh, and uh, hopefully this matches your prediction right here of your um, uh, your drawing and uh, like I said I didn't do mine to scale so I didn't really get one there but I do think this comes out to be about 17 and a half centimeters on the drawing and that's what we have there okay well that's the 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 second one and uh oh Ron I just realized I did we do a sound check we okay oh, there you go. Now, now we're halfway through I was like oh I hope we turn on the sound okay all right uh, so let me help you with the third one also here all right so let's do number three and so, again, let me kind of clear this off the board here. I'll, I'll leave this one here. I'll just erase number two. Uh, I'll erase the results of the, the previous one here. And I will look on page uh, 16 here and see that the second force is a hundred grams at 220 degrees. Okay, so your job is going to be first make the drawing because doing these drawings really, really does help. It uh, uh, may seem a little tedious at first, but as you'll see, uh, as the class goes along, and particularly you already saw in the lecture, I'm going to do a lot of these little arrowhead drawings. They don't have to be accurate, but they really, really, really help your thinking. Uh, I'm was calling these free body diagrams and uh, that's what we call them when we draw forces but anytime we draw vectors we, we just draw them we don't always call them free body diagrams if they're not force vectors but we do keep drawing them all right so number two you could put the grid back in the middle of the page and let's do the the same thing and maybe I'll do this one a, a, somewhat accurate here I don't have any grid paper here, but I, I, I didn't like the fact I couldn't make a prediction and I want to do that a little bit better. So my first force would be 10 centimeters long at zero degrees. So that's that one. And my second one would be at 220. And that's why I was talking earlier. Where's 220? Because this is the one that a uh, few of you, I know this is going to throw you off a little bit. So the 220 is just 40 degrees beyond the half circle. But also remember this, you draw the second one where the first one left off. So if I put my protractor at the place where the first one left off and I go 220, this is 180. 10, 20, 30, 40. This right down there would be a little mark to represent 
the direction I need to draw this 220. And so if I draw from where the first one left off to the second one, I would get something that looks like that. And then the resultant, I'll say it again, is the combination of the two. So in this case, we did a little bit over like this. Then we did a little bit over like this. And the result is from the beginning of the first to the end of the second. And in this case, it's not very large. It just goes from here to there. And so if I were to draw the resultants and measure it, so I will draw from here to here. I am saying that if you put these two forces together, the two red ones together, you would get that black one. And you can kind of see how they're not quite opposite of each other, so they don't cancel each other out. As we did a lot of times in the lecture, we had equal and opposite and we got zero. So this, 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 this doesn't cancel each other out, but it's kind of close. And so when I put this on here to measure its length, I'm looking at about seven centimeters. So that means my prediction here is that the result of these two, when you take a hundred, and this always sounds funny to me. When you take 100 and combine it with another 100, you get 70. <laughs> so 100 and 100 make 70. Like I said, don't say that to a third grader. I was totally confuse them. They think 100 and 100 makes 200. But see, direction does matter. And that's what I, I'm going to keep emphasizing here. Okay, so it's 70. And then the angle would be, and this is again where the protractor will come into play. And so I'll put my little protractor here. And it looks like this is downward at 70 degrees. See, that's why I said earlier, this is the one that kind of confuses students because it's clockwise, it's downward, it's a negative 70, okay? So I need to put over here that it's negative 70 degrees or maybe even better, it is a positive 290 degrees. Okay. And so however you want to label it, it is fine. I just want to make sure you understand those are one and the same. And uh, that then is off in this direction. All right. So uh, I would say as you're working, now would be a good time to hit the, the space bar and just, just pause the video. And so as you hit uh, pause, uh, go ahead and you, you draw yours real accurately, okay? And see what you get. And then when you're done with that, start the video again and let's actually hook this up and see what we come up with. Okay, so you ready to hook it up? All right, so I'm going to come over here. And the uh, first thing I'll do is just kind of remove the resultant of the two. Um, and now things get a little different, so I probably have to move things around. But the first force is always the 100 at zero degrees, so I'll, I'll just leave that one here. Um, but the second force, the second 100, is at 220. And so maybe I will start here, zero, 180, and 220 would be right here. Okay, so this is the second force, and it is a hundred, so I'll take the hundred and I'll put it here. And just with this crazy configuration, I'll use now this one here to get the equilibrium of it. But I'm hoping you can kind of see these two are tugging. They're not quite opposite. I, I think if they were exactly opposite, it kind of looks like to me they would just be balanced on their own, right? And equal and opposite would, would add up to be zero. But it looks like these two are going to give a little push in that direction. Um, most of it is pulling this way, so that's why it's just a little push, and that's why we got such a small, small force. 
And for me to measure it somewhat accurately, let me move my string around here. And remember my prediction was 70. So if I go 70 and add, I'm sorry, my prediction was negative 70. Sorry, said that wrong. So that's why I'm doing this one. So I'm going to go down 70. So down 70, and that's the same as 290 all the way around. Okay, so all the way around this way is 290, or negative 70. Okay, so that's my prediction. I'll just take negative 70. But if I add 180 to a negative 70, I get 110. And so sure enough, here's 110. And if I pull on it, yep, that's the direction. And Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hang on. Okay, so here's 110. So I'm going to put this at 110. And then I'm going to take this and put it in this direction. And remember, our prediction was that it was a amount of 70. So I've got a lot to take off here. Last time I think we had 175, but there's my 70. I got the, the hanger itself, that's 50, and I got a, a 20 sitting on it, so that's 70. And sure enough, it does work, right? And, and, and so my drawing, or I should say in your case, your drawing, uh, does match what we did together. Right? These two add up to this one, but in the opposite direction, because this is the equilibrium. This is balancing what these two add up to. So I would say that these two must add up to a magnitude of 70 and a direction of negative 70, which the equilibrium would be at plus 10. Okay, so what you need to write up here uh, would be something that looks like this. Um, when I did the experiment, I got it to balance with 70, good, at an angle of 110 degrees, good, because it is exactly the opposite of what they add up to. This balances what they add up to. And so you're hopefully starting to get a, get a, get a feel for this. And hopefully if you saw nothing else, you've seen already that all three of these, we were adding a hundred together. So it was a hundred and a hundred. But the first time we got a hundred and a hundred added up to a hundred. The next time we got a hundred and a hundred and that added up to 175. This time we got a hundred and a hundred and it adds up to, to, to 70. The only thing that's changed is the direction. Right? So direction really, really matters here. And you can begin to see that the, the, when, when they're kind of in the same direction here, they, things get bigger. When they start to be opposite, so in other words, if the angle between them is more than 90 degrees, they begin to fight each other. And the result gets a, a little bit less. And, and, and that's the conceptual feel uh, you really want to get out of this. All right, well, let's go to number four. And so number four is this. Now let me clear this off a little bit. Um, the first force is the same. The... Uh, Second one is the one that keeps changing. And I would say now, for the, for the first time, we've got something of a different magnitude. Uh, we've got 150 grams at an angle of 60 degrees. And keep in mind that number two was at 60 degrees also. And so you can you know, see what changing the magnitude does without changing the direction if you compare experiment number two with experiment number four. And, 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 and we will do that in the discussion questions here. Like I said, the discussion questions are really good. They're just poorly written. Okay, so on this one, if I make a grid, uh, let me encourage you to put your grid 
with the origin a little to the left and a little down and so we have a lot more room of our graph paper over here otherwise it'll it won't fit on your on your graph paper okay so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to draw my first vector 100 grams at zero degrees would represent this there we go so there's my first vector and my second vector is now going to be longer this is the only one of these five that is not a hundred grams and so it is 150 grams so that means I'm going to draw it according to my scale I'm going to draw it 15 centimeters long okay but at 60 degrees means that I would put this here make a little mark so there's 60 degrees and then as I get my straight edge here I will draw a 15 centimeter long line at 60 degrees and so like I've been saying many times you draw the second one where the first one left off this is called the head to tail method we're trying to see what the result of these two and the result of those two would be a drawing that would show where the first one starts to where the second one ends that is the result of those two Th that would include both their magnitude and their direction and so this is how we we add them uh, together and so if I actually then draw this starting here and finishing here I have a length that is 22 centimeters long now I haven't drawn it real accurately so we'll see how it works on the force table here but here's what I would say I'm saying for my graph this would be the equivalent of 222 grams and so in this case a hundred and fifty and a hundred make two hundred and twenty okay so that's kind of my prediction but I can also do the same thing with the angle let me get the uh, protractor up here and I get an angle of 10 20 30 about 35 Uh, let me say it again if you get numbers like 36 or 37 yours is probably more accurate again I'm just kind of a rough sketch here but try to draw it as best as you can all right so my prediction here then would be to say that the result of these two is an angle of 35 degrees all right well I'll say it like on the other ones and this is a good time to hit the the space bar and just pause it and you do your drawing you do it accurately see if you can come up with something like that and when you're done with the, that drawing let's come back and actually hook it up let's see if the the real thing matches what we predicted okay all right are we back <laughs> okay so let's come back here uh, let's hook these two up here so I'm coming over here to the force table all right so so here's that first force again 100 at zero degrees um, our second one is at 60 degrees and so maybe I'll use this one here for the second one at 60 degrees okay and so let me just check the string so that's pulling this way and that one I get it kind of centered it's gonna pull that way okay so we got zero degrees and then we've got 60 degrees and this one already has a hundred but this one doesn't have anything on it this needs hundred and fifty so coming over to here this is the hundred right yeah so there's a hundred on here so let me put a 20 a 20 and another 10 all right and so there's 150. okay so these are the two forces in fact just looking at the force table here you can kind of see that these two adding together look like it's kind of pulling this direction and that's sort of looking like 35 degrees and so th that's what my prediction was that these two would pull that way with a magnitude of 220 so to see if it works out right 
uh, let me put on my equilibrium, that's, that'll be this one, and so my equilibrium needs to be exactly opposite of that. Um, so let's see, 30 plus 180 is 210, right? So five more makes 215. All right, so 215. It doesn't want to stay on the 15. Okay, and maybe I'll just kind of experimentally try it. I'll just tug on it. Does that bring it into equilibrium? Yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it could be off a little bit though. Maybe I'll just kind of hand tug it and put it right here. Yeah. 35, 36. Remember, I didn't do my drawing real well, so I'm not convinced it's 35. In fact, just doing the experiment looks like it's more like 37. So when you guys do your drawing and you do it accurately, I, I'm, maybe you'll get something closer to 37. Or maybe that's just the, the error made in the equipment here, but I'm thinking my error is more on my drawing at 35 than it is on this, on this table. But I don't really know. But anyways, if I'm at uh, 37 and I add 180, uh, let's see, uh, 40 plus 180, drop off three. Yeah, I would be right here at 217. And of course the other half of this prediction is it should be a force around 220. So I'll give that a shot here. So here's my little weight. There's the 50. And uh, what did I say? 220? Two, okay, so 50. That's uh, 70. Another 20 is 90. Another 20 is 110, 130, 150, 170, 190, 210, and 220. When I put on a, a 10 there. All right, so this is 220. And sure enough, yay, it seemed, to, it seemed to work. And I can pull this out. And so again, like the other three, this, this is what this is saying. This is saying if you combine these two together, and so here is a force of 100 at zero degrees, and the other force is 150 at 60 degrees. If you add those two together, they are equal to, and here's the magnitude, uh, 220 at an angle of, and it looks like I'm at... Well, the resultant is 37 because I'm at 217. Uh, so what I would write over here on my piece of paper that eventually you're going to scan and turn in via canvas is to say that my equilibrium was 220 grams at an angle of 217. Okay? And then these are off by a couple of degrees. But give yourself a little playroom. I, there's nothing wrong with being off a couple of degrees. It's hard to do the drawings right. And I'm surprised mine's even that close given that I don't have my graph paper here. So I'm kind of happy with that. All right, well, on to the final one. All right, so the final one is actually kind of easier than the, the, uh, this last one. They were getting harder for a while, now they get easier. But if you look at the, the last one, The last one has 100 grams for each of them again. And this 100 grams is at a right angle to the first one. So it's at 90 degrees. And so on this one, you can put your grid right in the middle again. You'll have space. And... I'll just draw the first one, 10 centimeters 
over. Okay, so from here to there, there's 10 centimeters. Uh, then drawing the second one where the first one left off. So there's 90 degrees straight up. And I gotta draw a second one, then straight up. That is 10 centimeters long. And so the resultant is the sum of those two. So the start of the first to the end of the second. Okay. And so I'll lay this here. And so there's my resultant. And as I held this up, I noticed it looked like it was about 14 centimeters. So that means that this should be 140 grams. And I didn't measure the angle, but this to me looks like an isosceles right triangle. So I'm hoping this is 45, de yep, 45 degrees. So 45 degrees. And so that's what my prediction is. And so just like I said on the other four, I'll say it one more time, hit, hit the pause button and do your part of the experiment, do your, do your drawings, and then come on back. So I'll pause. Ah, are you back? Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so come on back here. Uh, let's hook these up. Um, I've got some adjustments to make. I'll use this as the resultant again. And if you remember last time, the second one we increased to 150 so I'll go back to 100 for this and so the first one is still at zero degrees and I'll take this second one and put it at 90 okay there we go uh, let me slide this around uh, let me then apply this force I'll just leave this one loose uh, but again, maybe you can already begin to see that this force plus this force is adding up to something right along that line right there. If I were to take this peg out, this little uh, ring would go shooting out that way. Now that looks like about 45 degrees. And so from an experimental point, I'll just kind of pull it back here and say, ah, oh, right about that angle looks good, uh, which is 225 degrees, which isn't a surprise because that's really what the prediction was. Because if we go back to our drawing, our drawing said it would be 45. If you take 45 and you add 120 degrees, I'm sorry, 180 degrees, you get the 225. Okay, so I'm going to put the string at 225. And the other part of this says that these two should add up to 140. So this one here being the equilibrium should have the same magnitude, just opposite in direction. So I put it the opposite of direction here. Uh, the magnitude then needs to be 140. So let's go down to, uh, uh, well, I went too far. So 50, 70, 90, 110, yeah, is that right? 130, 140. And if I did Pythagorean's theorem and calculate it, it'd be 141 because they're right angles here. All right, so I'll put 141 on here, even though the prediction is 140. But I'm hoping, ta-da, we got it. Yeah, and so again, one last time, here is kind of the point of the lab. Can you see how 100 and 100 could make a lot of different numbers depending on their direction? In this case, 100 and 100 that are 90 degrees apart are equal to 141, okay? And then, of course, the direction then is also determined in that mix. So that's the main part of it. Well, let's come back over uh, to here. And as I said, once you've done all these, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I gotta, I gotta write this down. So uh, my equilibrium, I put 141 and uh, at uh, 225 degrees would be my last step, okay? 
So eventually you're going to scan this page and turn it into uh, Canvas here and you know I'll give you plenty of time so you can shoot me off some questions like I said in, in the lecture you guys have been uh, really good at shooting off some questions and so things are starting to fall into place and uh, at least uh, it, it looks that way on my end of it. Uh, but especially as we get into the weekend we now won't have any more lectures or lab for four more days. Oh five more days because we have a holiday. Uh, and so we'll do the next uh, lab and the next lecture on Tuesday. And so I know I'll spend a little more time on the canvas, maybe even organizing those videos. Uh, but the last part of today's lab is right here, these three questions. And like I said, let me help you a little bit with them. Because here's how the first one reads. It says, if the two forces are added are equal. No, let me pause right there because here's where your author could have done a better job. Because forces, and this is the whole point, have a magnitude and a direction. So when he says equal, is he saying that the magnitudes are equal? Or is he saying the directions are equal? Or is he saying both? And sadly, I think he just means the magnitudes are equal not the directions. So let me clarify that. So read it this way. It says if two forces have the same magnitude. So in today's experiment that was true for the first, the second, the third, and the fifth. They each had a hundred grams in magnitude. They were all different directions but they had the same magnitude. All right. So if the two forces are equal in magnitude, what will their direction be? Well wait a minute. All four of those, the first, the second, the third, and the fifth, like the fifth one we just did, the fifth one was at 45 degrees. The first one we did was at 60 degrees. The second one we did was at 30 degrees. <laughs>